The impact of Kobe on this city, I said it earlier in the show, it was him and the Hollywood sign. That's what you thought of with LA for the last two decades. What did he mean to people here? You know, people don't understand how much um, uh, athlete like Kobe or Kareem or Shaq or Magic, how much they really hold this city together. Yeah. You know, this city has a lot of fault lines. Right. Not only in the ground, but, but with the people. Yep. And what bring us together is the love for our teams, our, our Lakers, um, Dodgers, you know, today I have no hate for the Clippers, the Clippers and the Raiders, I mean the Rams and the Chargers, all the teams that's here hold this city together because it gives us something, you know, to, to unite behind mm -hmm. where, you know, it's, it's gang banging, it's economic differences, it's racial differences and our teams hold us together. So, you know, Kobe is, is the, some of the glue that holds LA together. And you're doing what I've been doing for the last 24 hours is I keep talking in the present tense yeah. because it doesn't seem real. When you first found out about this, you said someone texted you. And yeah. then what did you next text on your phone? Who were you reaching out to? Uh, Kobe <laughs> to, you know, see if he would hit me back. And when, it, when it, I didn't get it back, you know, you don't immediately start to worry because, you know, he's Kobe and, he, he, he always get back, you right. know, sooner or later. So um, it was just, um, it's just true. You know, I, I just feel, I just toss and turn all night thinking about Vanessa and, and his daughters, thinking about his mother and his father and his sisters, thinking about his, you know, Vanessa's parents, yeah. just everybody in his immediate life that loved him. Um, you know, what they lost, you know, I know what we lost as, as fans. Um, me personally, I don't have too many heroes that's younger than me. And, you know, that was one of them. Yeah. So, um, it's profound, uh, but I think more about his family and, and, that, you know, I hope the city wraps their arms around the family and, 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 and embrace them as much as they embraced Kobe because, you know, the family's going to need it. What do you think he meant to Los Angeles, Richard? Well, you know, you know, what was so special about him is that he was from Philly mm -hmm. and he came here. But everyone knows about, you know, Philly sports and that <laughs> grittiness and that toughness and that work ethic. But he combined that Hollywood smile, that Hollywood entertainment, right? So. That's what made him so special. My parents are both from Philly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll, I'll never forget this. I was in like my second or third year and we had just beat them. And so Devin George, Kareem Rush, Luke Walton, they come out and my parents are sitting right there and they're like, hey, hey, hey Richard, you know, we want to meet Kobe. Now I'm thinking about Kobe, the, <laughs> the, the, the competitor. And I, so those guys come over and I was like, hey, my parents want to meet Kobe. Right, and this is I like I, you know I played against him in the NBA Finals, and, and I was like, man, we just beat him. I don't want to go and ask him. And then all of them were like nervous, like, right. nah, I don't know. So you know, parents don't ever ask for much. And so I walk over, and I was like, hey, Kobe, you know, my parents are both from South Philly. They would really like to meet you. And I'm telling about the flip of a switch. He was like, all right, go. He went over there and talked to my parents for five minutes and just, oh, you, you know, you went from to South Philly High School. Oh, yeah. Da, da, da. And he just chopped it up with them for five minutes. And I'm 23 years old, like in awe. Mm -hmm. Like Kobe, uh, Luke and Devin George are sitting <laughs> behind him like, what is going right. on? <laughs> and the craziest thing about this is my parents were in town last, yesterday for my, my kids' birthdays. Wow. And so to have my parents be right there and to have them be in as much shock as I was, and, you know, again, this is generational. My little boys were climbing all over me, me being devastated, my parents being devastated, everyone down the line, you know, from a five-year-old kid to a 65-year-old parent were all devastated. And, you know, what he meant to L.A. is really what he meant to the world. He just, and, you know, embodied so much. What is his on-court legacy of his, just for players, for coaches? We hear so much about the city, but even just on the court, right? Yeah, and I just... 
I don't know if we can even put it into into words yet because it's the, the impact is going to keep. It's going to be a ripple effect mm -hmm. from what he you know what he did for the game of basketball. Um, you know, the, the the unbelievable part of his I think his legacy is on the tail end how he began to give it back mm -hmm. and pay it forward to the next generation to Bron to D Wade to these guys. Last night, I, me and D Wade sat up all night with his son. And he just talked about stories that, you know, time that Kobe spent with him, tutoring him, mentoring him, competing against each other. And, you know, for me, it was a surreal moment because, you know, I think about Kobe and his daughter. And I'm sitting here watching D Wade and his son. And you forget that these superheroes are people. Yeah. And that they're just dads and that they're just husbands. And, and they're trying to figure it out as we go. And I think, um, you know, we're not going to know you know, what that legacy is. But the ultimate competitor, obviously, the hardest worker I have ever seen in, in, in my whole 22 years of basketball, he's the hardest worker I've ever seen. And the moment, I think when you grow up here in LA, you understand, like Cube, you make movies. You can retake a movie. Mm -hmm. You can't retake a shot. No. And he always answered the bell and, and ended the movie <laughs> on that high note. 